to start off with, I'm going to be using uh, JSB Exacts. These seem to fit pretty much every rifle. Once I've got it roughly zeroed in, I'll then uh, do some pellet testing properly. So, here we go. Got it fitted up with a Hawk Air Max scope. And what a stunning rifle it is. It's a bit of a beast. It's got to be said. So I will do a proper review of it when I get home. But I just wanted to get it zeroed in really to start with. Right, so, initial thoughts, I'm shooting over to the, wow, <laughs> shooting over to the left a bit to start with, uh, the right bit I mean, gone left, three in a line, well, that ain't bad, <laughs> so I've pushed it out a bit further now, just under 40 yards now see what we can do at that range. Should have brought my bag with me really.
So, still shooting over to the uh, over to the left. So I need to move them right a bit more. But wow, 40 yards with a gun that I've not only just used with no rest. Shooting off the floor. I'm quite impressed with that. So, initial reactions on this Vyrauk. Well, first off, typical Vyrauk build quality, as you would expect. Very solid. Very well made. Um, these originally had the Theoban gas ram uh, system supplied directly from Theoban when these rifles first started to be made in the early 90s. Um, but obviously since the urban seas trading now they're uh, made in-house by Viro and they have been for some considerable time um, and it's a very nice reliable unit um, it's the one that can be adjust the uh, air pressure slightly with a little pump at the back here um, been out a long time this rifle it's not one of Viro's most popular for some strange reason I don't know why, because um, in my initial results of shooting this, literally just got it, just literally got it. First time I've fired any pellets through it, getting groups like that, just lying down. Um, first time I've used this scope, so I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with that. I reckon shot off a bag, this thing would be lethal. Um, very nicely made, beach stock, bit more in keeping with the old more traditional style stocks than the latest offerings from Vira that have that cutaway at the back here this one's a bit more just sort of traditional um, a mixture of checkering and stippling on the uh, pistol grip and the same on the forend very tastefully done very nicely done actually looks very good Vira picked out there ambidextrous but there is a decent raised cheek piece for a scope and it sticks out a little bit not on the other side though, it's, bit, it's flat on the other side. It's still raised, but it's flat. But you can still nonetheless use it. Um, it's quite a heavy gun though, I must admit. Scoped up, this has got to be £9 easily. It is a heavy rifle. And it's long as well, considering it's the carbine. It is quite a long gun. So it's a long and heavy gun. Uh, it's definitely not a junior rifle, that's for sure. Cocking it though is easy enough. Uh, no real effort to cock it, uh, very smooth, no noise, um, shooting experience is very good, um, the usual gas ram thud, um, and it's quite smooth actually, it really is, it's actually quite a smooth rifle, trigger's superb, it's not the record unit, um, it's not the record unit, this is another unit that they made especially to go on the, uh, on the gas ram rifle. Um, and the safety catch is slightly different as well. Uh, still automatic, but you can reset it once you've cocked it and the safety catch and you turn the safety catch off um, by pushing on the other side. It's a normal cross bolt. The red thing shows here. If the shot doesn't present itself, if you press that lever down, it resets the uh, safety catch. This is all metal, not plastic. It's a metal casting of some description. A gold coloured trigger. Uh, fully adjustable and equally as good as the record unit, I think. Normal standard of quality on it. The blue is superb. Polishing is really nice. The breech block is incredibly bulky and solid with the usual cross bolt. All in all, just top-notch Vyrauk quality. And this is fitted up with Vyrauk's uh, latest moderator. And Vyrauk moderator is probably the best in the business. This one's really good. Um, you're never going to get that um, sort of whisper quiet quality that you get off a PCP with a, um, a gas ram or a Springer. But nonetheless, downrange, it really does kill the, uh, kill the noise very, very effectively. Very, very nice. It is heavy. It's a big beast. But it's very accurate and it shoots really sweet. It's a proper thud and that's it. The lock time is very fast. Um, comparing it to my Fenman, um, I would say that the Fenman has a nicer overall polishing, 
to the barrel and the bluing's deeper on the Fenman. Um, um, also think the Fenman perhaps, I'm not sure about the action, the shot, the shot cycle's pretty much the same. I think for accuracy though this nips it possibly, but my Fenman is 2.2 so it's never going to be as accurate as this rifle. It's also a lot lighter than this. The Fenman must be a good pound and a half lighter than this rifle. Uh, this is a lot quieter though. That silencer is a lot more effective than the one that's fitted to the Fenman. And the Fenman's got a much shorter barrel as well. Uh, this trigger is also better than what's on the Fenman. Um, but yeah, what a lovely rifle. Really nice. The only thing I'm not that keen on so far that I've just tested it out now is um, as regards hunting. When you disengage the safety catch, you get a metallic twang. Now whether that'll die down as the rifle beds in, I don't know. But there is a bit of a metallic twang as you um, uh, disengage the safety catch, um, which isn't ideal for a hunting rifle. Uh, but like I say, this is literally, that. those are the very first shots this rifle's had through it. So it's going to bed in. Uh, even a gas ram takes time to bed in. Um, you know, the piston seals and all the rest of it take time to bed in and wear themselves in. And likewise, any mechanical parts usually become smoother and quieter as time goes by. But, whoa, I am impressed. I am impressed. That is really nice really nice I really can't understand why these never became more popular um, now I understand that people are worried about gas rams leaking and uh, depressurizing and things like that but it's relatively straightforward to top it up and uh, I bought this from the air gun center in uh, down south and they give a lifetime uh, lifetime warranty to the original owner so it's not really a problem because if it starts to lose power for any reason, not that I'm imagining it will, but if it does, straightforward, send it back and uh, they'll recharge it or do whatever's needed. So it's not really a problem in my opinion. But when you think that this gas ram system is remarkably efficient and uh, long lasting, like my Femman was made in 2000, I think it was 2001. So that's what, 20 odd years old, still works fine. Still bang up there, 11 point something foot pounds. Um, it's had nothing done to it, it's never had any tweaking. So there you go. But this thing's beautiful, what a gun. It kind of reminds me of when I first got my first HW80, it's got that feel about it. Um, but without the god awful spring resonance that the HW80 had to start with. Um, I like the stock, it's more traditional. Uh, I don't like those new cutouts on the new stocks really. This is much nicer. Uh, action's really smart. There's a distinct band here, I don't know what that is, where the cylinder joins the breech. For some reason it's a different colour. Not entirely sure why. But yeah, fantastic. Beautiful rifle. That was fun. Right, so I have a quick look at a bit more detail now as I'm back home. Um, as I said, this originally was uh, a cooperation between Theoben and Weirauch. Um Theoben originally supplied the uh, the actual gas ram. Um, and then later on, when Theoben went out of business, Weirauch made their own. And the very first of these rifles were actually stamped on the other side of the breech. Here, um, they were stamped Theoben because they were licensed, officially licensed to use the uh, Theoben gas ram. Um, so yeah, so first impressions of actually been out shooting this thing is, oh my god, it's incredible. Uh, I would say that this is the most accurate, uh, remembering that I've had it literally, well, an hour now. Uh, I would say that this is the most accurate non-PCP that I've got running, poss maybe, maybe not. Maybe actually, maybe the Diana 54 Air King Pro is slightly more accurate than this rifle um, but you must remember that the Diana Air King Pro is recoilless because it runs on a sled system uh, and therefore you can shoot that off a bipod which greatly aids stability um, I must admit I do struggle um, holding on target particularly well 
for a long period of time. Um, so yeah, so possibly the Air King Pro is slightly more accurate, but the Air this is heavy, but the Air King Pro is even heavier. That thing must weigh about ten pounds with a scope on it. Uh, it is a very very heavy rifle. Um, it's also quite noisy, whereas this with the Modi on is actually a lot quieter. But this is stunningly accurate. I think it's the really, really quick lock time of it. I think the pellet, as long as you don't do anything stupid like the two shots that I did, one went very low, one went very high. Um, and I think one of them was I rested the, accidentally rested the bar at the uh, Modi on the wire fence and the other one had the trigger guard resting on the wood of the fence. Um, which made those two go astray. But when I sat it properly, as you should shoot a Springer, resting it on your hand if you lean on anything, um, the groups were astonishing for a gun that I've only just got. Um, just made up with it. It really is beautifully made. Do like this trigger. It's a bit noisy. You do get that twang. But this resetting function works perfectly. Trigger's superb. Um, really good. Very, very nicely finished. It feels as solid as hell. Cocking it's lovely. Nice and smooth. No grouchiness, no twangies, no any noise whatsoever really. Just a really positive clunk when it engages the trigger and sets the safety. A very, very quick lock time. Superb rifle. Really is superb. Uh, and just looking back at some of my old Egg and Wills, and oddly enough, this gun, when it was released, was considerably cheaper, even when it was sold by uh, Theoban. Theoban sold this themselves on their own um, factory shop. And what they did, they changed, at the time, Virac had a rather plain um, beach stock on, so there was no checkering on the front. It had checkering on the pistol grip, but there was none on the front. Um, and what Theoban did, Theoban put uh, their, a nice walnut stock on, um, looked like something they'd got from custom stocks of Sheffield, to be honest with you. Um, and then the original ones of these didn't have a moddy, and Theoban put their own moderator on. Um, and it was still um, nearly 150 quid cheaper than the cheapest Theoban. <coughs> so if you look here, the Scirocco Countryman, um, the basic rifle was, let me see now, where's the price of the basic rifle? There we go, 327 quid for the Countryman. That's just for the rifle. And yet you could buy the Virac outfit uh, for 255 quid. Still fitted with a uh, with a walnut stock. It's the open system and a walnut stock. Still fitted with the same moddy. And yet it was 120 odd quid cheaper. And that was back in the day when 120 odd quid was an awful lot of money. So this gun's been around for quite a while and I am massively impressed with it. It's a heavy beast, yes it is, but the lock time's astonishingly quick. And there's a real like just a dull thud, not much of a kick, not much reverberation. Um fantastic thing it really is. It's a beast. A proper beast of a rifle. Love it.